Hi, my name's Critter XD, and welcome to my channel. Today's video is all about the Wheel of Time finale, episode eight. I can't believe we're here. It happened so fast, but here we are. So I am doing this one a little differently. In past videos, I've sort of paused throughout while watching to give my thoughts. I'm just gonna record myself watching the finale for an unadulterated experience. And then I'm gonna hop back and give you my sort of breakdown thoughts, highlights, that sort of thing, if that makes sense. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do enjoy the video, please hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And if you wanna know when I post new content, hit the little bell for notifications. I wanna watch this so bad it's already posted, so let's get into it. Prologue, prologue. Sick dragon pin. Yeah. Sure will. Preach. Probably right. <laughs> so let's talk about the prologue. <laughs> let's talk about the cold open. We got loose there and but we did not get Winter Dragon. <laughs> we got a prequel to the Winter Dragon. Did you expect that? And and do you think that we're gonna get the Winter Dragon in another season? Cause I feel like that is just good TV. You know, like this big monologue followed by somebody creating a giant mountain. I mean, feels like maybe it's gonna show up later, but I loved the, I loved the prequel to the prologue. I, I, I thought it was great. The fact that we got Lucerne in this season was a big treat for me and and just seeing what his conversation was with the Tamerlan seat before any of the hundred companions you know went to face the dark one it was it was really interesting to see and I, I thought it was pretty cool so what here we go <sighs> Nine <eight. laughs> Bye. They can burn out? First of all, and probably maybe my most controversial opinion, I loved that Egwene and Nynaeve got to do something at the end of this season, unlike at the end of The Eye of the World. I know a lot of people really loved Rand's big epic fight at the eye and then, you know, traveling somehow without even knowing how and taking out all the Trollocs um, in the gap. Like, yeah, that was cool. In the books, it was cool. It was also incredibly confusing, though, and it left our other main characters with really not much to do other than be confused about what had just happened. So I think that this final episode did what a lot of the rest of the season did, which is take care of our female characters and show us what powerhouses they are. Even if, even if it was technically out of their control for most of it, at least they got to lend their power to defend the city. So I know that, I know that people are going to disagree with me on this one, but that was something that I truly loved and really, really appreciated. I know that the women had a lot to do all season, and so some people might think it's sort of imbalanced in their favor, and maybe that's why I like it so much, because I'm biased. Um, but, but Eye of the World was imbalanced in Rand's favor, the book itself. And I know he's the Dragon Reborn, but I love that we got a better idea about the power levels in Egwene and Nynaeve in this season, especially in, in this last episode, than we did in the book. Speaking of the powerhouse ladies, can I just say that Nynaeve saving Egwene was so moving and just pure Nynaeve.
and I loved that part also. So not only did we get their power levels, but we also got, you know, Nynaeve's spirit and her heart and her her love for her people. Um, and then Egwene turned around and just, you know, took care of business. What? Uh, in, in a fit of sadness, she ended up healing Nynaeve and gave us a little taste of Egwene's power because we haven't seen much out of her. We've got a little listening of the wind. We got that altercation with the White Cloaks, but we haven't seen anything big. And this clearly, I mean, Nynaeve seemed like she was on the verge of death. If not, I thought it looked like she was dead. And so Egwene bringing her back from that gave us a little taste of what we can expect from her going forward. So well, yeah. No way. No. Second thing. This isn't... Well, this is different. Loyal. Is he dead? I feel like that was just... That was a pretty violent little shove there. And, uh... And yeah, I'm kind of worried about it. <laughs> There's... I feel like... I feel like they can't kill him. Because he's Loyal. He's a fan favorite. But at the same time, that looked really, really lethal. Um, so I'm hoping that... You know, Egwene with her newfound healing powers, or Nynaeve since she came back to life, one of them is going to be there in time to heal Loyal. Otherwise, I will be devastated. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh. Okay, one thing that I think everyone will like, unless you're a hater, is the Land and Nynaeve scene. Uh, uh, I mean, Daniel Hennig knocked it out of the park this season, I think, and just that line made me love him even more. There's not much to say about that other than the fact that he was incredible and I'm, I'm such a Land and Nynaeve shipper, it's unbelievable, but uh, I just wanted to bring it up. No, not mad. Okay, so Fane suggests that one, if not all of them, or most of them, of the, you know, Two Rivers Five, if we're not calling them the Evensfield Five anymore, are going to turn to the dark. As he was saying that, we flashed to our boy Matt Coffin, walking into Tarvalin, and I have to believe that that was some sort of callback to Moraine saying... You know, if he touches the dagger again, we're going to lose him. My guess is that he was he was going after the dagger without knowing that Fane had taken it. But I just don't know what to think about this. Matt Cawthon is my second favorite character. Matt Cawthon is my favorite male character in the entire series. So if I have one thing that I'm the most worried about at the end of this season, it's Matt. And I would like to believe that... The fact that Matt is beloved and ends up being such a great character. He, he's got such an incredible arc that this is just going to be part of that arc. You know, he's going to delve a little deeper into the dark before he comes out on the side of the light. That's my hope. If it doesn't end up that way, I get it is another turning of the wheel, but I will be a little bit sad. I'll be a little bit sad about that. Come on, Perrin. Then we've got our boy Perrin, just completely torn, basically not doing 
anything because he's got this idea that the way of the leaf is the way to go. Granted, he's like upset because he wants to do something and Loyal's kind of like holding him back. He doesn't know what to do. I don't know. Perrin's just our boy Perrin. Bless his heart. He's just really confused, which is is <laughs> kind of on track with with our boy Perrin. Everybody kept gaslighting him about Pat and Fane. Finally, it's confirmed. Fane is back and he ends up killing or not killing Loyal after Loyal tells him to basically calm down. Um, yeah, I, uh, I feel, I feel for Perrin here. He, he really doesn't know what his place is in the world, which, you know what, that really tracks with the book character. So even though things are slightly different than, than what they were in the books for him, um, as far as where he's at in the, in, at the end of the eye of the world, his, his mental state is just about perfect. Oh, Maureen. Get him, Momo. So another shocker at the end of this was Moraine. The question here is, is she stilled? I mean, when I saw the power, like, flood into her chest, I thought, okay, uh, what's happening here? That looked a lot like when Loghain got gentled, when he had power flooding into him. What was that? She's just shielded, right? She's got to just be shielded. And I I don't I just I don't I don't know. I'm really concerned. I can't believe that she got stilled. That that feels premature. So I'm going to dig into a few Lord of Chaos spoilers, so just word to the wise like skip ahead about a minute if if you haven't read through Lord of Chaos. But so I'm wondering if Moraine is actually stilled, if Nynaeve is going to end up healing stilling earlier than expected. Um and instead of healing stilling of somebody else, I guess I could say this swan because we said Lord of chaos spoilers. She's going to end up healing Moraine first. That's the only explanation unless Moraine just has some kind of intense block on her for now um, that fades or she's going to have to remove somehow, or it's like, it's going to end up being a mental block. I'm not sure. And the fact that the warder bond is masked while this is happening is is kind of interesting because I feel like while they're shielded, that's not the case unless I'm misremembering. And if I am, I don't usually like being corrected in the comments, but if I am misremembering and when they're shielded, they can't feel their warder bond, please let me know. <gasps> No. Good shot. <laughs> there he is. Okay, we got to talk about Rand in that last fight. That was unexpected, crazy, but definitely very emotionally impactful. Rand. Bless his heart, he tries. Rand basically got Egwene's accepted test, but it was from his perspective. Gorgeous. The Joya. No. No. No! I mean, we knew it was fake, but no! Ah! No! He got the quaint, idyllic farm life that he always wanted with their daughter, Joya, which happened in Egwene's accepted test. But he... He had to make the choice to let it go, not Egwene. 
What about it? Peace! Ha! So they, they pulled something from, I guess that was maybe episode three. So when Rafe said that there were going to be bits of episode three, or sorry, book three, maybe that's what he meant. Um, that scene with Joya definitely was a call out to a going to accept the test. And the fact that he decided that he wasn't going to reshape the world in his image, but wanted to do what Egwene wanted. I mean, I've been, I've been a bit, a big big fan of Randween this whole season and this just like was the icing on the cake for me. I love Rand and Egwene. I am going to be heartbroken if it doesn't work out. We'll see how they how they resolve that. Maybe the fact that he left and told Moraine to tell everybody that he had died is going to cause Egwene to move on and then just complicate things down the road. I guess we'll see. Or maybe Rand will try to move on because he thinks he's never going to see anybody again. Either way, this 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 episode left us with a lot of questions and and not so many answers. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll see where things go. Obviously, everyone said that that wasn't the last battle, and so if you're a book reader, you know, you think you know, unless the show changed it, that that was a Shamael, and and so that is an interesting twist that still nobody knows who that was and also there weren't other forsaken at the eye and also the green man wasn't at the eye could we just say yeah this was all very different also the dark one being imprisoned at the eye of the world different from the books there it's, again i said that this was so different from the books and 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 it really 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 was um but i feel like it had similar vibes and it ended up where it maybe needed to be which was rand going off on his own which happens in the great hunt not on his own but sort of on his own side quest and everybody else doing other things so it, it makes sense it's it's something to get used to for somebody who's so used to the books um but honestly it was it was a huge rush this episode and i i really enjoyed it wow Season one is complete. It's in the bag. Episode eight was something else. I venture to say that episode eight was probably the most different episode than everything that happened in the books. In, in the sense that it had the same sort of scenario. They're headed to the eye of the world. And, and you know, the Trolloc army is descending on Tarwin's Gap. But that was about the only similarity. This episode was not at all what I expected, but it left me wanting a lot more. The fact that we have been teased on the Sean Chan. God, this part was spoiled for me, that poor girl. Oh, another big bad. Ooh. That's so mean. It's just a little girl. And the Damani makes me want to see more of that. Um, I, I'm really excited for season two. The, the end was, as I said, there were so many changes that I'm still trying to wrap my head around them all. Um, but again, I think they put all the characters kind of where they needed to be going forward, except for Moraine, who I'm just not sure about. I'm not sure what's going to happen with her here. So, um... Yeah, I can't believe that's it. We did it though. That was that was the first season of the Wheel of Time and the fact that it happened at all is absolutely thrilling. So it's been a pleasure doing this with everyone. Follow me on my other socials. Um, hit the follow button on YouTube or the subscription button. Hit the bell notifications so you find out whenever I post new stuff. And uh, thank you for stopping by. Wow. Is Moraine stilled? Where is Rand going?
Fane just has the horn. And Mats and Tarvalin. Nynaeve just got raised from the dead by Egwene. What is happening? <sighs> wow.